I feel like it's kind of cool that, you know, he actually makes YouTube videos, you know? That's, that's kind of cool. I mean, the phone thing sucked, and, like, the you can't buy gear in Diablo Immortal, like, I mean, that was kind of, that was kind of fucking, like, that was just fucking complete bullshit. But this is good. L let's see it. I wanted to know if ChatGPT could make a video game. So I asked it to make Flappy Bird for me, but we're going to have one okay. rule. I'm not going to write a single line of code. Any code that we use okay. is going to be written by ChatGPT. Right. I'm just going to copy paste it over. <laughs> this could go very wrong. I wrote a brief description of all the components that go into Flappy Bird. Okay. Real quick, it spit out a six step plan to make Flappy Bird in the Unity game engine. Holy so shit. So following the instructions for steps one and two, we're gonna set up an empty game project and add our art for the background and the bird. Which brings us to step three, which is to write a script to give life to the bird so it can flap its wings while flying to the right. But we're not gonna write the script, ChatGPT is. We're just going to copy paste the script over. Ta da! It works. But there's a problem. The bird. What? The, the wings didn't move. It's flying off the screen. So we're. But it. it the, did the wings move? GPT is. We're just going to copy paste the script over. Ta da! It works. Yeah, whatever. But there's a problem. Just a little the bit. The bird is flying off the screen. So we're going to ask ChatGPT to fix that and write us some uh -huh. code to have a camera it's follow the bird on. as it yeah. moves to the right. But you may have noticed that the bird is flying off the background. Uh -huh. That was a mistake I made setting up the background in the first place. So I'm going to chalk that one up to human error. Right, My of bad. course. With a quick adjustment, we now have a script working great. At this point, oh, I realized holy shit, he's we don't moving. want the game to start right away when the game loads. We have to wait for the player to click at least once to flap their wings before the bird starts moving. Holy Otherwise, shit. Otherwise, you go barreling into the ground as soon as the game starts. Yeah, as that would make per sense. our main rule, I had ChatGPT write all of the code to delay movement until the player had flapped their wings for the first time. Wow. And success. The game now waits until the first click, and then you can flap, flap, flap your heart away. Have you been wondering where the art we've been using came from? Since ChatGPT is writing all of the code, well, if you haven't guessed already, the art is generated by AI as well. I Holy shit. I'm waiting for at the end of the video for it to for him to just like turn into uh, an alligator and be like, yeah, I was AI as well. Welcome to the future. Had rough block out sketches into mid journey and had this it is fill good. in the details for the background environment, the bird, and the pipe ops. This brings us to step number four. Okay. Things are going it's to get Mario really pipes. interesting. In step four, obstacle pipes are going to start appearing. Yeah. ChatGPT has given us instructions to hook up the physics for the pipe, which will cause the bird to collide with the pipe, which oh, is how the game is going to end. But as I was reading the instructions ChatGPT had provided, this line caught my eye. ChatGPT was planning to create the obstacles off to the right of the screen. That seems fine. But right. then it proposed moving the pipes left at a constant speed. I can see why it suggested that since the pipes do appear to move to the left when you're playing. Yeah, they you see, do. The bird and camera are already moving to the right. So the pipe should actually remain yeah, the stationary bird stays, and allow the, the bird, bird to fly moves, up to not them. the pipe. I pointed this out to ChatGPT, and ChatGPT agreed. You're right, it wow. said, and it proceeded to correct itself. I copy-pasted the code back in, and now it works great. Except, you just wait, wait, up. what's going on? The bird's flipping around <laughs> like, a, like, like, like some kind of cuckoo bird. This is the first curveball that I'm going to throw at ChatGPT because okay. this was not part of the original design specification. Dude, look at the complexity of this. Can you modify the bird controller script so the Z rotation of the bird is set relative to the vertical velocity of the bird? Like, holy fuck, man. This is crazy. We're going to ask it to rotate the bird based on whether the bird is moving up or down. Without it's any... fuck. No, it's, it's not that obviously like you can... It's not that the words are crazy. It's the fact that the AI can interpret the words. We know what vertical velocity is. Yeah, d fucking obviously. But it's impressive that, th that the fucking computer knows it. Hesitation, ChatGPT said, sure. You want the bird to tilt up and down? You got it. 
and it gave me the code to do so. Don't you guys have birds? And now we've got this awesome little bird that tilts up and down based on the direction it's moving rather than spinning around like a pinwheel. Wow. And that brings us on to step number That's a five, good bird. Implement game over and scoring conditions. What I really like about this process is that while ChatGPT is taking care of the code, I get to focus my attention on design work. I get to position text elements on the screen. Holy I decide shit. the distance between the pipes or the exact tuning numbers for how hard the bird flaps its wings. So now we have scoring working. But if you'll notice, the points are actually incrementing before I get to the pipe. That seems wrong. Yeah. I actually want the score to increment when the player passes through the gap in the pipes. So we're going to ask ChatGPT. Instead of having its own score interval parameter, it looks at the spawn interval of the pipes no way it can do this. T to adjust the code to give us more control over the exact moment in time that the point is awarded to the player. The player now gets points when Jesus they Jesus Christ. Oh my fucking God. That is insane. It just knows. What the fuck? Actually passed through the pipe. At this point, I realize that we're missing a ground for the game. The ground in Flappy Bird is really helpful uh -huh. to provide that constant sense of forward movement other than the pipes. Yeah, true. The ground was not part of the original specification, but I said, nope, we're going to need it. I let ChatGPT know that we're going to be adding a ground to the game, and it gave me step-by-step -step directions for how to set up a never-ending ground the bird would be able to crash Jesus. into. Jesus. And now we have an infinitely long ground along the bottom of the screen, reinforcing This looks that like one of the many apps that got added. Remember whenever Flappy Bird got taken off the app store because, like, the fucking the guy that made it, like, I don't know, he got harassed or something? And, and then, like, everybody was fucking scrambling to make... It's not Flappy Bird. It, it's Billy Bird. And it's, he's wearing a hat now or something. Yeah sense of forward movement and then move on to step six which is to have a game over screen come up when the player makes a collision with the pipe or with the ground God, made, our made coding assistant chat gpt didn't that's, that's hesitate money. to provide us with detailed instructions as well as all of the code to set up the game over screen mm -hmm. once again i was able to focus on the design elements like deciding what font size and color yeah. to use the sizing of the buttons, and then paste the code that ChatGPT had provided me to make the whole thing work. And now we have a proper game over screen. But wait, there's one problem. After the game over screen pops up, the player input is still being received, oh. which means the bird can jump up after it has fallen to the ground. That's kind of ridiculous. So I told ChatGPT that when the game over screen pops up, we need to stop the camera and stop movement so that the player shouldn't be able to control the bird anymore. But here's another mistake ChatGPT made. There was a simple coding error and the game wouldn't run at all. I just told ChatGPT that the error existed to see what it would do. Polite as always, it apologized for the error and provided the there correction. After is. following its instructions, we now disable player input when the game over screen Oh, is. now the bird correctly dies. Uh, that's great. Reached. Now, this is where we're going to get to our second curveball. We're going to add a high score system. Okay. Let's see how well ChatGPT adjusts to this brand new request after we had basically finished all six steps I of bet the it could original do this. plan. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think... copy-pasted all the code it had provided me. But watch what happens when I run the game with the new high score code enabled. I scored two points on this Flappy Bird run, but my high score was only listed as zero. Okay, maybe. ChatGPT wrote all this complicated logic with a simple error. I told ChatGPT I thought the problem was with the add score function, and it replied, you're right. It's almost like we're working together. We now have a high score system that works. Oh my God. On this round, I got a high score of nine, and the score is retained between rounds. So... Could somebody with no coding knowledge use ChatGPT to make a game? Probably not. Probably not yet, but we're getting there. I'm definitely going to repeat this exercise with more complicated game types on future AI models, so I hope you'll join me for that. In the meantime, happy game making. Holy shit. I haven't guessed already. I, I... It's such a mind fuck to me that the guy... The the, the 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 Diablo Immortal, don't you have phones guy? 
he actually makes videos number one and this is a pretty good video too it's not like this was some bullshit or whatever this was real it yes this is the guy it's him <laughs> it's fucking him I, I swear to god look at it there's him there he is it's him oh my god this is amazing I, I can't believe this. Let me link it to you guys. This is so cool. Oh my god. He definitely has a phone. Yeah. There we go. And I, I feel like also what's, what's interesting about this is that it kind of goes to show that the people that are able to utilize this technology are the people that already have understanding with it. So I think that that's probably a good thing because at least it alleviates the concern that a lot of people have that, oh, well, chat GPT is going to take all of our programming jobs. Yes, that will happen, but it probably won't happen for at least five more years. So that's a little bit of reassurance right there. And uh, yeah, there we fucking go. And uh, dude, no, I think I, I'm pretty sure he's still at Blizzard, right? I mean, I, I'm, I'm fairly certain he is. Yeah, 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 I think he is. Yeah, sure. Less than five years. Yeah, we'll see what's going to happen, okay? Quite easy thing to code like Pong. It's going to struggle with other stuff for a while. Yeah, but remember whenever AI couldn't do, like, hands with, like, people and you could tell that their hands were fucked up because it was AI and now you never have that happen? Isn't that crazy? Isn't it crazy how that, that was, like, four months ago? Man, wow, how time flies. Imagine that. So yeah, uh, holy shit, I cannot believe Wyatt Chang, don't you guys have phones? The guy not only has a YouTube channel, but he regularly uploads on it. And he only started it three months ago, too. Oh my god. Why games feel grindy and four ways to fix it? I probably should watch that. <laughs> Compare it to some Blizzard games. But either way, I think this is fucking awesome. Yeah, good for him. That's really cool. Holy shit. Wow. Yeah, of course I'm going to subscribe. Absolutely.